So I get asked all the time by Bull Terrier people uh, how I'm able to allow my dogs to be off lead as often as I do, which is pretty much every day almost. Almost, I would say at least 98% of our walks are off lead. And um, just, it's a lot of work. My dogs, I've been working with them on off lead stuff since I brought them home pretty much. So. Uh, the biggest thing about Bull Terriers is they tend to lose interest very quickly and so I really just need to always keep them motivated. Um, I walk with a lot of gear, a lot of toys, different treats, uh, fun stuff like that and I reward them for every time that they decide to come to me. So like right now uh, my dogs are just hanging out, mostly because I also enjoy them just hanging out. I don't really like it when dogs all the time hover around me when we're on walks, mostly because I am a photographer, so I'm always trying to shoot pictures and uh, shoot videos, so if my dogs are constantly hovering around me, that's not something that I enjoy. And they like to just enjoy themselves and have a good time. Uh, so I'm just happy with them listening when I call and checking in with me uh, and not wandering too, too far away that they, you know, just go and do their own thing. Uh, chasing wildlife's a big no-no, but um, we start everything with positive reinforcement and uh, every time that they check in with me, uh, they're rewarded either with uh, verbal praise or with toys or play or treats or just something. So that is a constant focus in the beginning is just rewarding them every time that they come and check in with me. So I always have something new and interesting. It's never always the same thing. They never know what sort of reward that they're <laughs> that they are going to get. But for the most part out here, I live in an area where I can just allow my dogs to do their own thing a lot of the time and just check in with me every once in a while. Um, if I was somewhere like a busy park or where there was a ton of danger or distraction, um, obviously I'm going to ask my dogs to come in and check in quite a bit often. But as it is, I'm happy with these guys just doing their own thing for a lot of our off-lead time and just checking in every once in a while or just whenever I call, so. a little more obviously if this was if these guys were not old pros on being off lead uh, I would not allow them to have this much freedom uh, but because I trust them she's three she's been doing this for three years he's ten 
She's been doing it for nine years. Hey. Ouch, you got a nasty bite. So, because these guys have been doing this so long, as I said, uh, about 98% of our walks are off lead. And um, in a setting like this, where there is very minimal distraction, it's quiet, there's not a lot of people, there's not other, well, there are no other people, uh, there are no other animals. Um, that is why I trust these guys to have so much freedom and I'm not currently micromanaging them while I'm shooting this video. Um, but with that being said, when you first start with a bull terrier, it can take a couple of years to get to this point. Like I said, she's three. And she made it easy on me because she has very high toy drive. Personally, I like toy drive a lot better than food drive, especially high toy drive. So um, he doesn't have high drive of any sort, neither food nor toys. He likes his food, but it's it's not high enough to drive. But, um, so he took a little more work. But for a youngster, a young puppy, um, every time that they check in with you, you just reward them. You want them to come to you. And I use a lot of different things uh, depending on different distractions. So different smells can be different distractions. Uh, different things that they want to roll in can be different distractions. Noises, uh, just getting to run can be a distraction. Um, just wanting to roll around in the grass can be a distraction for these guys. Yes, and many others. Uh, but um, then there's the obvious distractions like wildlife, squirrels, um, people, other dogs, other animals. Uh, but as far as when you very first start, you need to go to somewhere quiet, um, work somewhere quiet, work with a lot of different motive, you know, different items for motivation. Um, as I showed you my kit, I have different toys, I have different treat items, I have different, just so many different things. I have things that make different noises, I have things that have different scents, uh, different textures, um, and sometimes I don't even use absolutely anything out of my, out of my you know, I don't use items per se. I just, I'll sit on the ground and that'll get my dog's attention. I'll start running and that'll get my dog's attention. I'll start jumping around, that'll get my dog's attention. Uh, sometimes I'll go to a low hanging tree branch and I'll start shaking it and that'll get my dog's attention. So you really need to be able to utilize whatever you can uh, to break your dog's concentration off of another distraction. Um, just anything, anything. That's that's the that's the fun of of owning bull terriers is uh, it's not cut and dry like other dogs where it's either toy or food, toy or food. Like a lot of other breeds that are happy with those things. Uh, bull terriers, you know, they're happy with those things some of the time, but not all the time. <laughs> are you having a roll? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, he's excited. Sit, sit. Sit. Oh, you're gonna give me a shake. Give me a shake. Great job. Nichols. <gasps> sit. Sit. She says, I, I haven't been taught to shake yet. I know I'm. Don't lay down that one. It's nice today. It's nice today. Give me that paw. Shake. Thanks. You. <laughs>